One day after putting USC coach Steve Sarkeesian on an indefinite leave of absence, USC announced that he has been fired and athletic director Pat Hayden issued the following statement. After careful consideration of what is in the best interest of the university and our student athletes, I have made the decision to terminate Steve Sarkeesian effective immediately. Through all of this, we remain concerned for Steve and hope that it will give him the opportunity to focus on his personal well-being. A player told ESPN via text on Sunday that Sarkeesian showed up lit to meetings again today. Another source said he showed up Sunday morning and appeared not normal and then was told to leave. According to SB Nation, the coach checked himself into a residential treatment facility. Stephen A., what's your reaction to this? My initial reaction is sadness. Before I go any further, <clears throat> Skip Bayless, you have been on the record, uh, which I deeply, deeply appreciate as a friend you highlighting your family's issues and history with alcohol. Appreciate that. Um, do I have members of my family who've had issues with alcohol? Sure, but not to the level that you detailed about your family. So I am far from an expert on this particular situation. Drugs is the other side of it. I can speak on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but alcohol uh, is obviously a, a, different for, a different drug that I'm not that familiar with. It, it is with. different. It is mm -hmm. different, okay? Mm -hmm. Having said all of that, my heart goes out to the Sarkeesian family yes. and him himself. I hope that he gets the help that he yep. needs. You don't wish this on anybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm certainly not going to sit up here um, and vilify and excoriate this man who clearly needs help. He doesn't need to be vilified. He doesn't need to be insulted. Uh, he doesn't need to be criticized uh, because he has a problem. Yep. This is not an act of immaturity or anything like that. He clearly has an addiction. Um, so with that being said, despite the fact that I sit here incredibly empathetic to his plight, his situation, and that of his family, mm -hmm. USC made absolutely the right decision. He needed to go. As far as I'm concerned, it should have happened the moment they learned of these transgressions, the missed practice, uh, showing up to a game drunk, mm -hmm. uh, all of those different things. Yeah. It should have been immediately handled. Mm -hmm. The reason why I believe that wholeheartedly is because these are kids that we're talking about here you cannot be a leader of young men if you cannot lead yourself mm -hmm. it's simply impossible and although that's applicable to people in the world of professional sports because they're grown men with families to feed mortgages to pay children to take care of etc you deal with it differently only from this respect. They can handle more than kids yep. at a university, uh, uh, an institution of higher learning supposedly can handle. You can't take that risk. You can't do that. I was speaking to my man, Jeff, which both of, both of you yeah. know, my godson, yep. Nicholas. Long Beach. That been here. That's right. Yep. Okay. Nicholas could potentially be a big time player, y'all. Like I, I asked Jeff, what, what, he said, Coach Sarkeesian couldn't come into my house. Mm. You can't come into my house asking me to trust you with my child. So when you hear something like that, that says it all, that speaks to it, it is what it is. But what really has resonated through my mind over the last 24 hours, I'm wondering why not, why Pat Hayden isn't out the door with him. Now we appreciate the greatness of Pat Hayden at USC. Mm -hmm. We appreciate the fact that he bloated about USC, its tradition, what it stands for, and what we're supposed to be all about. We understand that he doesn't need this job. Mm -hmm. He's free to walk away anytime. They're free to let him go anytime. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's on a year-to-year -year deal, okay? Because mm -hmm. he's a successful businessman. He doesn't need USC. And under no circumstances do I want to come across as an individual that in any way is trying to impugn the character mm -hmm. and the integrity of Pat Hayden. Yep. Because I understand that as a man, meaning himself, what he stands for, by all accounts, he seems to be a very good man. But the dereliction of duty that he exercised in vetting Steve Sarkeesian before hiring him is at the very least egregious. Keyshawn Johnson, our very own Keyshawn Johnson's former number one overall pick in mm -hmm. the NFL by the New York Jets, mm -hmm. former star at USC. Yep was on my radio show yesterday, and he spoke about how Sarkeesian, because guys like him are consulted, mm -hmm. and he yep. spoke about how Sarkeesian was sixth on the list. Sixth. But now out of the blue, Pat Hayden came and hired him anyway. And then we learn 
that there was when he was the coach of Washington one of the five seasons, there was an expense report, an expense report. You actually put this on your expense report. He went out before noon, a brunch with assistant coaches, ordered four shots of tequila, four shots of an unspecified liquor, and five beers. This is according to the Los Angeles Times. Today, you look at all of these different things, and you knew what happened at the preseason rally, mm -hmm. where he came, uh, he, he showed up as inebriated. You clearly looked out for him yep. because he was your friend. Mm -hmm. You clearly looked out for him because of y'all relationship. You clearly looked out for him at the expense of what was in the best interest of USC. Yep. At the very least, Pat Hayden should have nothing to do with the next head coach hired. And if I'm being fair, what other athletic director do you know can make such an egregious error all in the interest of looking out for his friend? and still keep his job. Mm. I'm just saying. It pains me to admit I agree with every word you just spoke. I like the heck out of Pat Hayden. I know him pretty well, covered him when he played for the Los Angeles Rams. Just for your edification, he is a good guy. It's Might awesome. be a little naive, wasn't the typical pro football player because he was magna cum laude at USC, which led to him being a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford. Mm -hmm. So he didn't really fit the profile exactly of the NFL player. Not that they can't be good in class and smart, but he right. just didn't, he was always a little bit of a fish out of water in the locker room. Okay. And I always found him to be a little bit rose-colored glasses. Everything was gonna be okay. He would see nothing but the good in everybody around him in the locker room. Mm -hmm. He was a pretty good quarterback in the National Football League. He won some games as a yes, he was. little undersized quarterback. Los Angeles Rams. Won. Boy, he won one against my Cowboys in Dallas, a playoff game when you're beating Roger Staubach, and it was it was something to behold. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure he's qualified to be an athletic director. Maybe a fundraiser for USC. And to your point, he he was a highly successful, high-powered attorney before yep. he took this job for the sake of his own And a mater. businessman, yes. Yeah, he's a businessman. Yeah, he made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But... He did love Sark to a fault. He had a soft spot for him that turned into a blind spot okay. for him, which is very, very dangerous. All your evidence and information that has come to the fore is damning because the man who was such a, a great student did not do his homework on it in his coaching search. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's now been reporting that several of the Huskies he coached at the University mm -hmm. of Washington are saying, oh, he had alcohol issues that impacted his ability to do his, his job as a coach when he coached here in mm -hmm. Seattle. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. And Pat Hayden seems oblivious to all this? Rose-colored glasses on? Mm -hmm. And then remember what Pat did to protect his coach? Remember September of 2014 at Stanford? Remember this game? I happen to be watching it live. Somehow Pat Hayden gets a text up in the press box in his wherever suite he was, and, and he's supposed to go down on the field to help Sark, who's into it with a couple of the referees. Mm -hmm. and he went down on the sidelines, and Pat Hayden is screaming at the referees from the sidelines, mm -hmm. member of our committee that picks our, our playoff finalists for college football, mm -hmm. and he was on the hot seat over that because that's out of bounds. You know, you, you've, you've completely, literally crossed the line onto right. the football field. Mm -hmm. And... Remember, USC is a private institution, mm -hmm. so they can do whatever the heck they want to yep. do. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to tell them one way or the other, and they, mm -hmm. they all love Pat Hayden. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm with you. I don't think he should be allowed to pick the next head coach, mm -hmm. just because well, the, here's, the, here's the final irony. The, the most painful irony of, of, of all to me is that Pat Hayden, being true blue to his buddy Sark, enabled him to fail at USC. If he had used what the the alcoholics called tough love yes. back before the season started and put his foot down and said, you are going to rehab now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We will go interim. We'll pick somebody on our staff to get us through. I know we have a good team. We have a chance to have a great team, mm -hmm. but we are going to get through this year and then you're going to go fix yourself, we hope, and then you're going to come back next year. That would have saved his job. I'm pretty sure and we were career. all sat back, right? And his career. Yeah, wouldn't we have all sat back and said, boy, that's a, t yep. it's a tough thing he's going through, but we'll wait and see how mm -hmm. it turns out for next year for, for Coach Sarkeesian. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, he didn't let that happen. He let the wrong thing go out of too much blind well, love for Sarkeesian. A couple of points I want to make based off of what mm -hmm. you just said. Number one, I am not going to sit up here 
and speak about a man with such impeccable credentials who is so revered and act like, oh my goodness, he should be fired because he made a mistake. It was a dereliction of duty. It's not that. It's that Pat Hayden is about fairness. Pat Hayden is about what's right and wrong. No, he is. I agree. Any other You're institution right. that you point to, what athletic director do you know mm -hmm. would get away with yep. making such a, a, a number of egregious error, yep. errors as it pertained to one individual? They wouldn't get away with it. Mm -hmm. Okay? You clearly shoved fairness and equity aside in an effort to engage in what some of us would view as nepotism, I'm looking yeah. out for my homeboy. Mm -hmm. I'm and looking out Carroll for this guy. Well. And so the, the Pete Carroll connection, of course, but Lane Kiffin had a Pete Carroll connection. Yep. It did not stop Hayden fired from firing him, him yeah. on a runway, yeah, on a runway mm -hmm. off a plane. So I, I'm saying that's the other point that I wanted to point out about what you made, because you talked about the rose colored glasses. Yeah. And I'm going like this. Well, that's not entirely correct, Skip, because that's not what he had with Kiffin. He was pretty hardcore with Kiffin. He went. He didn't. There was no rose petal glasses there. He was pretty hardcore. But I think Lane with pushed him until he just I, couldn't I, be pushed I, I, anymore. I, I, I'm just saying. But Lane didn't push him like this. In a different like, way. In a Lane different confronted way. him and challenged him. And yeah. Lane, conf Lane confronted him and challenged him because Lane Kiffin was thinking about what he inherited post Pete Carroll, mm -hmm. the pressures of succeeding the man, mm -hmm. and on top of it all, still having to win full uh, games with lesser than 85 scholarships yep, because it was confiscated nope, from them right. because of what transpired during the Pete Carroll era and all of this other yep. stuff, even though a lot of people at USC think that was bogus. Nevertheless, Lane Kiffin was in his face saying, whoa, 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 I understand where you're coming from, but look at what I'm having he, to he, deal he with. Was. So you get rid of him, Ed Orgeron goes seven and two in nine games. He did. They had a great relationship mm -hmm. with the players, had great relationships at, at USC. Pete Carroll said, I mean, I'm sorry, Pat Hayden said no. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Then, like Keyshawn Johnson said, mm -hmm. we got numerous candidates to look at. Numerous candidates to look at. You bypassed all of these dudes to go with who was number six on my list and most people list because even though he was in Washington five years, they called him seven win Steve slash sock or whatever because yeah. he couldn't get above the seven win plateau. Although he started from nothing there. I understand that. that. that he mess. started from nothing. Yeah. It was a mess. Yeah. He did all of that. All I'm saying is you do all of that and Pat Hayden brings you in. You not only didn't demand that he seek help, you glossed over it. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, let me ask you to skip to end this, to end mm -hmm. my point about this. Didn't you just say magna cum laude? Mm -hmm. Rhodes USC, Scholar? Rhodes mm -hmm. Scholar, yep. Doesn't Pat Hayden strike you as a relatively thorough individual? I would say he is. I, I would think you would have to be to achieve Are what he did. Are we to sit question. here? Is there anyone else you know? that have those kind of credentials that would be accused of not doing their homework? That's what I said. I... Do you, hold on, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is this. How do we know he didn't do his homework? How do we know he did do his homework and said, I'm going to bring my boy in here anyway? See, that's where it gets tight. Because am I really to believe this is an expense report? Yeah. It's what they maybe he didn't report. think it was a problem, though, maybe. like alcoholism. Maybe he thought the guy likes to party. I, I, I am in no way saying that Pat Hayden said, I know you got a problem, so mm -hmm. I'm going to bring you here anyway. Mm -hmm. What I'm challenging is this notion. You knew nothing. Okay. You knew nothing. Yeah, okay. If we heard, we on the East Coast. I'm, I'm, I'm not Keyshawn right. Johnson. You, you I don't give a right. damn about USC. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like going to their game. The one game against Stanford, I love Southern, Southern California and, and watching a football game yeah. in 90 degree, 100 degree weather. It was actually kind of fun. Yeah. But let's be clear. I'm not losing any sleep over USC. So why is it? I, and I knew about Sarkeesian. Mm -hmm. So how do you not know Pat Hayden? Mm -hmm. You didn't know? Okay. Really? All right, to be, I, I find that hard to believe. To answer you with fairness and objectivity, please. I know a, a lot of people who have covered Sark, who know him personally as reporter to coach relationship, they love this guy.
He is lovable. When he came here before the season started and visited, even we had Ryan Clark on hey. the show, had met him over at the hotel and Skip. just loved him. How can you not like Skip, him? Skip, I had him on my radio show. Yeah. I sat down with him for 20 minutes. It's the only time I've ever yeah. interviewed a man. I actually, I actually, I actually love the guy. I mean, it was it was well, a pleasure talking yeah, to him. That's the point. But what I'm saying to you is this: nobody's challenging whether he's lovable or not. I'm saying, you Pat Hayden, you knew nothing. Well, you knew. Now tell me you loved him, and, 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 and you just didn't think it was a problem. But this notion that he was completely oblivious—we know about it on the East Coast. We ain't paying attention to USC. Mm -hmm. How do you? I know it's impossible to me that this man didn't know this stuff. He did it. He hired him anyway. And that's why I agree with my man, the great Paul Feinbaum, mm -hmm. who basically called for Pat Hayden to dismiss him and said, at the very least, he should have nothing to do with the hiring of the next head coach. And I completely agree with that. I'm with you. I completely agree with that. And as you mentioned, Mr. USC Keyshawn was saying last night on Countdown, no more Pete Carroll coaching tree. We really need to get the right guy in here. And, and Keyshawn and would know. He would know. The Trojan War airs tonight that That's the right, executive yeah. produced. Good point. That's right. We have another big-time coaching vacancy. Steve Spurrier leaves South Carolina. We'll tell you why the head ball coach retires mid-season. That's after the break.